Hello, everyone. For you that don't know me, my name is Michael McPherson, and today is February 1st. Uh, it's the first day of Black History Month. And actually, I'm in Seattle. I live in Seattle. I live in Beacon Hill. Uh, and I call my little studio, Studio 203, Beacon Hill. Um, I wanted to, this year for Black History Month, each day post something about uh, a famous or maybe not so famous Black person from American history, not just Black history, right? But American history, because uh, Black history is American history. So the first person I'm going to talk to you about, the first person that um, I'm going to do this post about is, or this post is about, uh, is Carter G. Woodson. Um, and I'll tell you more about him in a minute, but before I do that, I just wanted to acknowledge that February 1st today is also, unfortunately, um, the day that Tyree Nichols was buried. I watched a little bit of it on uh, the news today, and it's very sad. Um, I want to give my condolences to his family. Uh, great respect to him and his family. I lived in Memphis for a few years. I love the city of Memphis. Um, you know, I'm, I'm devastated anytime any Black person uh, is killed in a violent way, um, especially by police. Um, and is, I mean, what can you say when uh, parents lose their children? Um, so, so anyway, maybe we can talk about this um, some other date. Um, but I did want to have a moment of silence for Tyree. Thank you. Carter Godwin Woodson. That's the man you see behind me. He is a very, very influential person. If you heard of him or not, he's probably influenced your life. <clears throat> so if you love Black history, if you know anything about Black history, even if you hate black history and you wish you wish that people didn't even study black history, um, this man impacted your life because we might not even have black history, have had Negro History Week or Black History Month if it wasn't for Carter G. Woodson. So as you can see, this is a Wikipedia search. You know, mostly I, I just call him Carter G. Woodson. I've known about him. Um, I don't know, since I was four or five, because my mother, who is a retired school teacher, taught at Carter G. Woodson Elementary School, and it's like one of my earliest memories, his name, and my mother told us, and I mean us by my, me and my two, my two sisters, the older sister and younger sister, who he, who he is, who he was, um, and Black history, um, we've always understood it as American history in my, my family. And while I'm not someone who could just rattle off names and dates and things like that, um, Black history, was, it's just, or, or my people's history, right? Um, African-American history, American history in general, uh, has always been a part of what my mother taught us, uh, to be proud as Black people, and that our people have achieved much and given much to this country, not only through slavery with our blood and our, our muscle, um, and our ingenuity, um, but also using our ingenuity to, once we weren't enslaved, and even during the period of slavery, because everybody wasn't enslaved, um, that we've helped build this country in a myriad of ways. So that's always been uh, something that I knew, um, and I think I carry that with me, um, that understanding about myself. And that's one of the reasons that um, Black history 
and understanding it as American history is really important. Um, so, you know, I would say to everyone, but especially Black people, don't only pay attention to Black history during Black History Month. Uh, know your history, know your history about your people, our people, and um, our people as Americans and really the world. Just learn. But yes, it is Black History Month. So um, what I plan to do, and this one's probably longer because I'm talking about, you know, a few things here. Uh, I want to each day um, post about uh, a person from American history, a Black person from American history. So today we're going to start out with, as I said, Carter G, Carter Godwin Wilson, because, well, let me just go through it real quick. He was an educator an editor and a historian, nicknamed the father of Black history. That's right. Born on December 19th, 1875 in New Canton, Virginia. Um, he, I mean, he was a professor, you know, he had, he's went to, to many uh, um, institutions of higher learning. Um, he graduated from the University of Chicago um, with a, looks like a BA in 1908 and an MA in 1908. Um, Harvard Divinity, PhD in 1912. Um, he went to the Sorbonne in Paris, France, um, dissertation on the disruption of Virginia. Um, he was a principal in many schools. Um, let me see, I'm just reading a few things here. He was the guiding force in the founding of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in Chicago in 1915, director and editor of the Journal of Negro History at from 1916 to 1950, Dean of the School of Liberal Arts and Head of the Graduate Facility at Howard University, 1919 to 1920. I thought this was interesting and I, I'm probably gonna look more into this. He was the supervisor of schools in the Philippines from 1903 to 1906, right? That's wild, right? Uh, just so it seems random, but you know, I'm sure there's a line that you, you could look into history and find out how that happened. Um, organized and became president of the Associated Publishers in 1921, which became the most important African-American owned publishing company for the next three decades. Received the NAACP uh, Spingarn Medal in 1925 um, for collecting and publishing the records of African Americans in America, um, inaugurated Negro History Week. And when I was a kid, that's what it was called, Negro History Week in 1926, and the Negro History Bulletin in 1937 published. Now here's some books and, and at least one of them hopefully you've heard of. Um, it's certainly one that uh, I know of and um, as that's one I know his name most related to. Um, when you think of Carter G. Woodson. So um, published The Education of the Negro prior to 1861 in 1915, A Century of Negro Migration in 1918, The Negro in Our History, 1922, which became a standard text on Amer African American history for many years. Also published Negro Makers of History in 1928, and the big one, The Miseducation of the Negro, 1933. He died on April 3rd, 1950 in Washington, D.C. Now, I need to go get something. I'll be right back. You can look at this for a moment. I should have brought this over here in the first place, sorry. So uh, my primary source for uh, this information I just gave you and uh, for information I'll be giving you in the future, I'll be using three books, excuse me. Um, one of them will just be general history. Um, but this book is a book I've had I don't even know how long I've had this book. I mean, maybe 30 years or more. 366 days of American history, not Black history, but American history. Uh, affirmation. I love that, right? And that's important 
which I'll talk about in a minute, but it's compiled by a guy named Michael D. Woods. And then the other side, it says, too much history for just one month. Can you see that? Too much history for just one month. And what this book does is, um, and I found out that, it, that it's, it's on Amazon and you can get it in, with a spiral or a heart, heart back, which I might do that. But um, here is the page on Carter G. And what they do is each day of the month uh, for 366 days, Carter G's was May 30th. Um, so I'm not going to be following the dates because I'm not going to go to February and just go 1 through 28. Um, but they have a different person for each day of the month. And then you can see down here at the bottom. Sorry, guys. See down here at the bottom, they actually have some other uh, facts about history. So on this day, well, not this day. You know what? That's what I'm going to do uh, is for each day of February is tell you what actually happened on that day. I just thought about that. So let's see if I can hurry up and find February 1st. Let's see what happened on February 1st. No, I'm almost there. So on February 1st, and the person is Robert Reed Church Sr. Robert Reed Church Sr. And I'm not going to read about him. You need to go look him up for yourself. Robert Reed Church Sr. I will tell you he's a businessman and a philanthropist. So I'm going to tell you. Oh, wait a minute. I'll tell you this too. Who is known as the richest African-American in the South. So go ahead and check that out. Born into slavery. So on this day in 1865, John Sweet Rock became the first African-American to practice before the U.S. Supreme Court. 1865, brothers and sisters. And I mean all of the brothers. I mean family. Across all genders. Um, family. Sexual orientations, family. 18, 1885. Jonathan Jasper Wright became the South Carolina's became South Carolina's first African American state Supreme Court justice. 1885. You would think that we would that we would be further along. We had the first South Carolina African American state Supreme Court justice in 1885, but we're just having the first Super Bowl with two black quarterbacks in 2023. Now, what kind of sense does that make? I do not know. And I really should have on my glasses right now because these uh, words are really small. Uh, 1936, A.Z. Taylor Morton, first African-American woman treasurer of the U.S., was born in Dale, Texas. 18, excuse me, 1938, Sherman Hemsley, actor, was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, that's Mr. Jefferson. If you don't know who Sherman Hemsley is, that's Mr. Jefferson, the Jeffersons. And then in 1960, four North Carolina a t students held a sit-in at a downtown Greensboro Woolworth lunch counter, ushering in the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Hear that? That's, that's uh, my home state. I'm from North Carolina. I'm a proud Southerner, proud uh, this son of North Carolina, and proud of my people because, you know, we stand up in North Carolina. Uh, the Poor People's Campaign that's that uh, is taking place now, headed by Reverend Bar Barber and uh, Reverend Theo Harris. Uh, Reverend Barber uh, came out of North Carolina and had been doing um, uh, protests there. Uh, for for years, standing up for what's right. So um, anyway, yeah. So check out this book. You can get it. If you can get it somewhere else other than Amazon, I'm gonna see if there's somewhere else if you want to get it somewhere. Affirmation: 366 days of American history, and I will see you tomorrow.
with a new person to talk about for Black History Month. Take care.